Keep your hands up, everyone. And how many were on floor here today? Can you imagine if those three bikeways were gone? How the hell would we all have gotten here? We'd still all be stuck in traffic. Um, you know, I, I, since we got wind, this announcement was coming, I think a lot of us thought it was just not going to happen. It seemed too unbelievable. And, you know, I was sort of thinking what I would say here today, and it's great to hear that all these kinds of talking points that, you know, Cycle Toronto, when it was formed in 2008, it's a cyclist union. They're all just mainstream things now. We're not an outsider organization. Everyone has my talking points. It's kind of great to just have to repeat things. I look at, you know, I see Albert over there, who's been like doing this fight for decades. These talking points, our talking points are mainstream. It's this government that's not mainstream. And we know that. We know that. Whether we're driving, we're taking transit, whether we're on our bikes, we're all just people. And this idea that we're going to define ourselves based on what mode of transportation we're choosing at that time is just ridiculous. It's backwards thinking. It's not how modern cities work. And I know we're here today to push back against the province. It's completely essential that we do that. But it's equally important to that our uh, municipal elected leaders know that we will not tolerate any compromise on this at all. We will not do Way that's been put in Toronto or across the province. Um, this fight isn't over. It's you know it's not just us here. It's really powered by everyone here. It's powered by people. Um, Cycle Toronto does have a petition. I'm sure lots of you all have signed it. It's got nearly 12,000 signatures, 11,000 and something. It's going to get 12,000 soon. Um, Please feel free to add your name, cycleto.ca slash I love bike lanes. The message is simple, bike lanes save lives and tell the province to stay in its own lane. Thank you. I want to end today with two speakers with powerful lived experience of what unsafe streets inflict on people. Please join me welcoming Dr. Sai Hill Gupta. He's an emergency room physician and he deals firsthand with hurt people like me and the people who don't make it. Thanks, everybody. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to keep it short because uh, I know we all want to get on a bike ride, but thanks again for everybody for being here. I'm here on behalf of my patients that I've had patients I know I will have. I'm an emergency room doctor and I work in a trauma uh, kind of setting a lot and we see injuries related to bikes, pedestrians almost every day. Um, you know people get injured every day from walking down the road, cycling and when people start their journey doing this they don't, they don't go out thinking they're doing an extreme sport. They don't think they're gonna go and get injured. They're just going about their day and I think that's that's really devastating when these injuries happen because they really do change people's course for often um, and I know Jess shared her experience for the rest of their lives with her frequently. So you know already in the city of Toronto we've had six deaths this year and while way too many so and you know for every one of those deaths we see unfortunately hundreds probably hundreds of injuries at hospitals across Toronto across Ontario where people are left with devastating injuries physical, emotional, and psychological. Um, you know, the research on this, like, you know, like, like people smarter than me study this all the time, and urbanists, engineers, have looked at what's going to make the impact for that person when they go and step out. It's not the care that me and my colleagues provide. We do the best we can, but it's infrastructure. It's infrastructure that separates people at, from, you know, two ton people. that separates people from two-ton vehicles against 50 to 100 kilogram people. You know, like the math just doesn't add up, and we really do need separated, protected bike lanes that's going to make an impact for the patients that I've seen and continue to see, unfortunately, every day.
I, I, I also just want to say, you know, like, you know, I drive, I cycle, and, mo mo you know, like, I walk every single day of my life. Uh, I don't drive every single day, I drive occasionally, but, uh, you know, I cycle most days, but, you know, walking and cycling should not leave you feeling like you have to really watch out and be hyper vigilant, scared. Um, you know, we've heard stories of parents, people, and that creates this sense of unease um, that I think is just super unhealthy for every single person uh, to feel like, you know, like if they're just going to cross the road or if they're going to just go out for a ride, and I'm going to end by just talking about one of my, you know, very serious contributions. They went out for a morning bike ride um, that they picked up during the pandemic because they wanted to get healthier. Um, they, were, they were going straight on a, on a, on a bike, uh, on a road that did not have a bikeway. Um, they were just going straight and a car, somebody driving a car took a left where they were going into an alley. They did not see this individual. Unfortunately, this individual was seriously injured. Um, they had a helmet on, but that only softened their blow. Um, and, and they were, you know, like seriously injured, weeks and months in the ICU. Um, and even though, you know, like, you know, like these stories don't always make the news every day, but they impact the patients and our friends, our families, our, you know, loved ones every single day. And I think that's devastating that we're going to, you know, potentially take, you know, the few guards that we have around protecting around these injuries. It's not the hospitals that's going to save these people. It's going to be safe streets and safe bike lines. Yeah. So thank you again. Before I hand the mic to Joey Schwartz to tell us about our ride route, we have one more speaker. My friend, FFSS member, Kendrew Pape. Thanks, Jen. So I'm a member of Friends and Families for Safe Streets. And I'll tell you, most of the people that I know in this group are members because someone that we love has been seriously maimed or killed by a driver. For me, it was my sister, my sister Kim. She was killed in a crosswalk in Newmarket. She was run over by a woman named Virginia, and Kim died a few hours after Virginia plowed into her on a winter's night almost seven years ago. Kim's body was broken, her chest was caved in, her hips were crushed, her arms and her legs were mangled. Kim's death devastated us, all of us, her children, her husband, her siblings, my dad, extended family, her friends, and all of her co-workers. It devastated us. Losing a loved one because a driver ran them over is horrific. It's a nightmare and it doesn't stop. It's not just a few months of grieving and memorials and a funeral. It's a disaster that keeps delivering year after year. Pointless arguments with insurance companies and, and unjust court cases and empty birthdays, sad family holidays. Whether you're a driver or whether you're a cyclist, we're all in this together because we all have loved ones. We've all got a brother or a sister or a parent or a child. We would mourn it so deeply if a driver ran them over and killed them. I know it. If a driver ran over and killed your loved one just so that they could get to work faster, 
how long would that affect you? Our loved ones are not expendable! Calm the whole street down. There's a good reason why we need that in this province. And it's not, we don't want them slow to calm the drivers down. We want to calm the whole thing down. It's not about wasting someone's time. It's about saving someone's life. And it's to make sure, the way, the way we do that, to make sure that those cars are driving at a speed that is survivable when they hit someone. We need more traffic calming in this province, not less. But under today, under this proposed legislation, if folks in Newmarket wanted to turn Mulock Drive into a complete street and safeguard their families, Doug Ford would stop them. <laughs> Doug Ford doesn't care about keeping our kids safe while they are walking or driving to school. Doug Ford, shame on him, Doug Ford doesn't care about carnage that's happening in our communities. I care, we care that everybody gets home safe. That's what really matters. Too many people are still getting hurt and they're still dying. Let's focus on saving lives instead of saving time. Thank you, Kendrew. Okay. We all know what's at risk if our safe streets get ripped out. We can't let it happen. I'm going to hand the mic to Joey Schwartz, who's going to tell us about our route. If you have a sign or a poster, please bring them up to me at the front before you leave. I would really like to get them back. Okay, Joey, take it away. Well, thank you for coming out. We're going to be making our route safe. We're going to be making it safe by numbers. So our route today, we're going to be coming out over here on the east side. We're going to use the cycle track on the north side of uh, Wellesley. We're going to then go all the way to Hoskin Avenue. We're going to take Hoskin Avenue all the way to St. George. We're going to go north on St. George. We're going to be passing by the ghost bike of Dahlia Chaka. Just in the last few weeks, that intersection is now a protected intersection. If Doug Ford has his way, that will be ripped out too. Boom! Then we continue north of Bloor, along St. George to Bernard. Then we go east on Bernard, and we go south on Avenue Road. We pass the ghost bike at Alley Second. He was just recently killed. He was the third person killed in that area in only uh, two and a half years. And there was another one, Miguel. He was killed in 2021. And then finally, we had an anonymous 24-year-old killed this summer. So in the space of less than 300 meters, we've had three people killed in the last two and a half years or so. Doug Ford has his way, the new bike infrastructure there will also. Ooh. So, from there, we continue south, we're going to come down Queens Park Crescent, and then enter back through the um, Queens Park itself on the north side, through the uh, cycle track there, and come back here. So, what I'm looking for, first of all, if 
I can have some volunteers to come and help cork intersections. What we're going to try to do, we're going to try to, at major intersections, have fellow cyclists stopping the traffic so that we can all go through as one group. We're a pretty big group here. Looks like we're about six, seven hundred people. So it'd be better if we go through as one group. So if I can get some volunteers, we're going to uh, form over here on the east side. Um, things to remember in a group ride. Be aware of the other cyclists around you. Don't make drastic changes. Thank <laughs> you.